there's Saturday the 22nd of October 2011. Welcome to today's United Kingdom talk. I've been very, very uh, busy this week, which is why you haven't so uh, seen me much. In fact, over the next uh, few weeks, I'm going to be quite busy, so uh, probably not so many shows. All right? Do not worry, nothing wrong. I certainly won't be getting the flu, uh, because this morning I was down the doctors and I have had my flu injection. Not only did I have my flu injection, I had it done by the big boss himself. Oh yes, the one who's in charge. The one who's in charge of the general practice just down the road in Birch Hill from me. So I feel honoured. I feel honoured. As I went in, I said, oh, I see I've got the boss to do it. He says, of course, we knew you were coming. Uh, my sister uh, refuses to have the flu injection. Uh, oh, so I beg your pardon. Uh, my nephew, uh, Jimmy, he's 14. He has a little bit of an asthma problem. Uh, but my sister won't let him have the flu injection anymore because... You know, and you know, I'm sure this is the same for lots of people. She knows someone who was ill after the injection, you know, a couple of years ago. So she won't let him have it. Uh, and I did mention this to the doctor, and he said, "No, no, you should uh, always have the flu injection." My sister thinks that because he's young, he should his body needs to learn to fight these things off for himself. And I mentioned that to the doctor as well, and he says. Believe me, you can't fight flu off. You know, if you're unlucky enough to get it, it it's it's really not a good thing. So uh, anyone who's entitled to a free a free flu injection, I highly recommend in my in my non medical brain, I, I'd I'd go and have one. And even if you're not entitled to one, you can always go to a, a local chemist. I know they've got these in the States as well, because while I was in the States, I'm sure we were in a supermarket there somewhere, and I saw a sign that you could have flu injection if you wanted to in this place. Uh, but you have to pay for it. It's not expensive here in the UK. I think it's something like 20, 25 pounds for flu injection. Believe me, it's, it's better. I'd much rather play. I've had flu, I think, three times, and it's not funny. It's really not funny. Something that you really don't want. So if you've got the money, spend it and have the injection. I'm sitting in here in the garden today. It's about 20 past one in the afternoon. And it is, it is a, I'm actually recording this one on the same day as I'm. It's 20 past one in the afternoon. And do you know, it's beautiful. We've had a very cold week here, really, in the UK. I'm now sitting here. I've got completely unbroken skies uh, above me. And I can see so many uh, plane trails and planes flying over. While I'm sitting here, I can see one, two. There's two planes directly. They're, quite, they're very high up, you know, you can't see the... All you can see is the trails. I can see three directly in front of me, one which is about to go underneath another one, or at least underneath the trail. And there's one going across right above. And I wonder... You know, you know when you... I don't know, you're out somewhere and you see a plane go over. But these ones <coughs> are so high, really, really high in the sky. They're just like a, like, a, like a pencil dot in the sky. And I'm just kind of wondering how high they are. You know, how high are these planes? They're clearly not going to land anywhere in the UK, I assume. No, they wouldn't, otherwise they wouldn't be that high. But I wonder where they're going. Do you ever do, you ever do that? Do you ever, oh, that plane's crossed already. A little cross in front of me. Like, oh, I feel very holy. I feel holy. Uh, some emails for you. Uh, ben Saunders. Hello, Ben. Uh, a very good friend of mine. Who I, I don't talk to enough, actually. Um, on the subject of the Grand Canyon video that you may have saw, uh, uh, seen in one of the shows, what a view. Oh, it certainly was, Ben. If you ever get the chance, you must go to the Grand Canyon on the helicopter. Although well, someone told me yesterday that there are quite a lot of helicopter accidents on the Grand Canyon. Anything that, anyone know anything about that? Helicopter accidents, do we know anything about that? Eric, my good, good friend Eric says, uh, nice show, Chris. The one, again, the one on the Grand Canyon. Just one thing, you kept talking about being on the helicopter and I had a vision of you spinning around on a giant merry-go-round. Well, <laughs> I wonder, actually, I suppose people have done that before. Do they do that? Would you, would, you, would, you, would you sit on the top? People have sat on the top of planes, haven't they, and walked along the wings. Idiots. Why would you want to do something like that? Uh, going back to merry-go-rounds, I probably would get on a merry-go-round, Eric, as long as it wasn't too fast. We don't like the fast rides, dear. Don't like the fast rides. I'm looking in the sky again. Right? This, actually, I'm going to see if I can show this to you. 
I don't know if I'm going to be able to do this or not. Just, just, um, sorry, those of you listening, if I explain, I'm now going to tilt the camera right up into the sky and see if I can show you the, the pla yes, you can see them. See those pla see that plane trail there? Look at that. There's another one. Let's just move the camera around a bit. Directly behind it, almost on the same path. Can you see that? Isn't that wonderful? Yeah, it's just wonderful, that, that plane trail moving slowly along. And there's another one behind it, but that's a little bit out of... I don't think you're going to see that one, because the sun's in the way. Look at the sun. There's the sun in my sky today. Beautiful, beautiful day. Beautiful day. Right. Let's do some emails then, boys and girls. I don't know where the cat is today. She's, um, she's disappeared somewhere. I have been taking a bit of a risk with the cat. Um, as you know, if you're a regular viewer, I do suffer a little bit from asthma. And uh, I'm pretty sure it is cat fur. But I've been uh, letting her in the bedroom uh, for the last actually since I came back from holiday and uh, she's been sleeping next to me and when I say next to me I mean less than a millimetre away from my face sometimes her head is and uh, the purring is just so beautiful cats purring it sends you off to sleep and there is a lot of fur on the bedclothes I try and hoover it up um, uh, it's it, 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 it makes me use the puffer once at night it's not too bad. Uh, my worry is that it's going to get worse. It's not got worse yet. Uh, I'm not quite sure what to do, you know. Because once you've let an animal into the house and she's slept with you or he or she has slept with you, dog, cat, whatever, you know, it's, it's almost cruel to then say, well, you're not coming in anymore. Because you know, they don't know why. They don't know that you're, you're suffering with breathing or anything like that, you know. And I, I feel almost a, a, a bit cruel not letting her in after that. Oh, I don't know. Um, Got to say, oh, there's a fly somewhere. There are flies everywhere. Uh, Alan says, how did you recover from the jet lag so quickly? With me, it always took about a week to recover. Alan, the truth is, I don't know. The only thing is, I do work nights. So my bedtime is usually around about three o'clock in the morning. And that's, that's the only thing that I can think of. Um, possibly that's, that, that's the reason for that. All right. And uh, an email here from, oh, by the way, the videos. Uh, there is one more short video to show you, which again is fountain. I do love fountains, don't you? It's some more fountains. Uh, I, I, do you know, I've got like a fountain in my garden. Trouble is, what happens when it, when it all gets like frozen up? Does, that, does it get damaged? I might have a little look on the internet, see how much a fountain would be for the garden. Yes. That'd be quite nice to have a little water feature here. Uh, my neighbour's got one, and uh, but um, there's a fence between us, so I can't really hear it. But when I'm sort of in my bedroom, if I open my window and stick my head out, I can hear the water slowly, you know, going down the, down the stones. And it's, it's a very nice sound. Have you got a fountain in your garden, have you? Do send in a picture. My email address is chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. Um, oh, music lovers, uh, there is a brand new... Um, DJ mix up online for you to download if you want to. Yes, my latest non-stop music mix. It's about an hour and 16 minutes long, this one. Uh, dated, I think, uh, the 21st of October. There's the track listing and everything there as well. You download it. It's about an hour and 16 minutes long. Cost you 80 pence, OK? 80 pence. And you'll find that at chrisreardenshow.co.uk. chrisreardenshow.co.uk. Um... Hello to Kath, who says, Hi, Chris, how are you keeping? I'm very well, Kath. Uh, very busy at the moment. I've got a couple of things going on at the moment. Oh, I, 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 oh I'll tell you. You know, I, I do, I'm, a, I'm a landlord as well. I do a little bit with uh, property and that, and I'm trying to um, uh, buy another place at the moment. Just, just you know, I, I, I don't go mad. I, 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 I try and pay off some of the mortgages that are already there. And um, I'm just sort of just made an offer today, actually, on on another little place uh, to rent out to people. So that, that's why I've been quite busy. And uh, other, other, lots, of, lots of other bits and pieces as well. Kaf says, pleased you enjoyed your holiday. Yes, I did. I mean, it was wonderful, you know, to, to go and see four legends like that. Or th sorry, three legends in, in the space of just a few days was just, just astounding. Uh, 
I would love to see Elton John. He's sung so many lovely songs. Yes, he has. What's your favourite Elton John song, Kath? I think mine is, I like Part-Time Lover. Um, Part-Time Love is bringing me down, but I just can't stop loving. You know that one? And I like um, your song. It's a little bit funny, uh, which of course you saw, if you saw the, uh, the um, fountain video in the last show, did you see that? That was, that was all done to the Elton John tune. Uh, apologies to listeners or viewers in Germany who won't have seen that show because uh, copyright issues there ban them for allowing me to play that record, okay? So you won't have seen that one in Germany. Kaf says, I've enjoyed watching the recordings of your trip. Uh, she says uh, she likes my video recording. Thank you very much. Today's video, Wednesday the 17th, uh, that's it, Wednesday the 17th of October of the water fountain was spectacular. Have you got any more videos for us to watch? Uh, yes, there, there is a very short one. I'm sure there is a little bit more. I'll, I'll have a look around it. It might be, I might have lost that somewhere. I don't quite know where I've put it. I think there's a little bit more. Did you have a go on the fruit machines? Kath, I only went on the fruit machines on the very last day at the airport on the way home. Because Las Vegas airport is, I mean, it's, it's like another casino. There's fruit machines, not as many actually, you know, but, but nevertheless, lots of fruit machines, areas where there's loads of fruit machines. And I did indeed put $5 in and I won $10. And I had the audacity to print out the ticket and cash and walk away with the $10. So I doubled my money. Very pleased about that. Thank you very much. Did you know the people in those casinos, they lose thousands. They lose thousands and thousands of dollars or pounds, whatever you want to call it. And it's wonderful. Um, Kaf says, I think I'd rather watch the shows myself than use the fruit machines. Yeah, same as us. We had a wonderful time seeing the shows. Uh, regards from Kaf in Wales. So thank you very much, Kaf. And that's it from the show today. Thanks very much for watching and listening. Don't forget the email address, chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. I'll see you on the next show. Bye-bye now.